Hello everyone, for this limited color palette video, we will be using Turner's Yellow PY216, Geranium Red PR242, and Delft Blue PB60, and these are from Schminker. These are new tubes of paint that I bought recently from Jackson's Art during their sale. So during their sale, the paint is actually cheaper compared to what I can get here in Singapore. This is Turner's Yellow, it looks kind of opaque. PY216, looks like a pastel-like yellow. Next, this is Geranium Red, PR242, looks like a warm red to me. Actually, it looks like Pyro Red. The paper that I'm using is Indigo Art Papers, 100% cotton watercolor paper. It's handmade watercolor paper. And lastly, we have Delft Blue PB60, which is commonly known as Indentron Blue. This is a very intense dark blue. Let's see if we can get some nice orange with Turner's Yellow and Geranium Red. This definitely looks like an opaque mixture, mostly because of Turner's Yellow. And now let's see what kind of purple we can get with PR242 and PB60. I'm not expecting a very vibrant purple. So this looks very dark. It's a very dark value purple. And lastly, yellow and blue for the green. All right, because the yellow is kind of opaque, the mixture looks opaque as well. So this is not that great a yellow for mixing. The green here is not as bright and vibrant compared to the greens you can get with a cool blue. The swatches have dried, so let's see. Turner's yellow definitely not as clean, as bright and vibrant compared to other yellows such as Hansa yellow or Azo yellow or Nico Azo yellow. So this is more like a muted yellow. Geranium red, um, this is nice. This is a nice warm red. I would use this as my warm red if I can. And Delft blue, well, Earlier on, while it was wet, it looks really dark, but when it's uh, dry now, it's much lighter. So it dries much lighter. And this blue, when mixed with the warm red, you get this very neutralized purple, very dark, dull purple. And with Turner's yellow, you get this uh, very neutralized green. So I probably need to add a lot more yellow to get the yellow green. But these two are kind of dark because this color is very dark. The orange is nice though. I like this orange. This is the sketch that I'll be coloring today. This was drawn with the help of a reference photo. You can download this from the video description below. I did not record my drawing process, but after drawing this, I realized that this is actually quite a nice scene. So I'm going to make a separate video on the pen and ink drawing process for this, basically redraw this. Let's start out by painting the light values. I'm going to have yellow here and paint all the yellows in the scene. So there's a banner here as well. Now this yellow is definitely opaque. I can see the color, the paint covering the lines already. So I'm going to dab some yellow here and there for the people, for the crowd. There are so many people there. And while I have this yellow, I'm going to use this yellow to mix the skin tone for some of these people. So I'm going to work really fast. While the paint is wet, I'm going to use a little bit of red to make uh, the skin tone. So this mix of yellow and red definitely is kind of opaque. For this sketch, I'm going to have this side 
brown and darker in value and then here lighter gray this building will be in red and this will be the white building so for this red building i'm going to have a shade of red with mixed with a little bit of yellow just to give it some variation okay so for opaque paint they are not that great for use with pen and ink because when you paint over the lines they will the lines will be covered which is the case uh, here which is what's happening right now unless you dilute the paint significantly and if you really want to use this with pen and ink or opaque paint with pen and ink you have to color within the lines carefully geranium red is semi-transparent so it's still not bad so for this building on the left it's going to be a mix of the three primary colors let me just squeeze the paint onto the paper first it's going to be kind of dark so a lot more blue probably but i have to be careful with the blue because this blue it's really dark this is probably too much water but we'll see how it goes and it's very easy to get a muddy mixture which is what's happening right now okay this is turning out to be a disaster now usually with transparent paint you can just squeeze the paint onto the paper and paint and you can still see the transparency the vibrancy of the colors but here um turner's yellow not a good option for mixing see this part here is it's just one big block of black right now I've just dried my brush to pick up the excess paint to make this wash lighter so that at least I can still see the ink lines beneath right so the left side is a disaster and now I'm using a much lighter wash to color the right side so one of the fun things about the limited color palette is you will learn what colors work well together and what colors do not so it's not like each time i use a random selection of color i would i know immediately that they would work well together it's not the case so some colors they just don't work well together and you can test this out with your sketch And even if it sort of destroys your sketch it's fine because it's just uh, for practice purposes and you will at least learn about those colors you have just used oops too much yellow here so the contrast between the this and the yellow is not good i need to correct this mistake so let's have a much darker color here so that the color can create a contrast with the yellow on the side okay i'm not a big fan of this yellow this turner's yellow is um it's not good for mixing not good for pen and ink see this very muddy color for the black and for the shadows underneath these white umbrellas I will be using a lot of indentron blue because it's such a dark value color you can use it to create contrast very easily you can use indentron blue on its own in concentrated form to color those black areas We'll see how light this will be later on when it dries. And this is the very light wash of the 
three primary colors mixed together. You see, once I add yellow, the color becomes muddy very quickly. I'm going to color a rectangle here that I'm going to paint with, um, that I'm going to add some details with the white gel pen later on. For this lamppost, I'm going to have a very light neutralized wash. This needs to be darker. The last thing that I want to do is probably add some clouds just to make part of the scene a bit softer. This should be sufficient. So this is the completed sketch after adding the details with my white gel pen. This is definitely not one of my favorite limited color palette, mostly because of Turner's Yellow, which is semi-opaque. It's very easy to create muddy mixture with this color. So this color is best used to lay on top of other colors to cover, mainly used as a covering color. So this was the problematic area. I tried to mix the colors on paper, hoping to get the vibrancy of each colors. But uh, once I started mixing the colors, they turned muddy very quickly. So I had to lighten the color by drawing my brush and taking out the excess paint so that I can still see the pen and ink lines. If not, it's just going to look something like this. It's going to be a black mess. If you dilute the colors enough, you can still use with pen and ink, but as a semi-opaque color, if you mix with other colors, you're going to get a semi-opaque or opaque mixture, which is not good for pen and ink work like this. Indentrum blue is nice. You can use it on its own as a very dark value. So most of these are actually just pure indentrum blue, PB60. This is a mix of three colors. It's a very light wash so that I can still see the pen and ink lines. Geranium Red PR242. It's a nice color that you can use on its own like this. You can get very vibrant reds and orange. So here I use a lot of geranium red and this is indentrum blue, almost pure indentrum blue. Notice in this particular sketch there is no green, it's just yellow, red and blue, but no green. Overall the sketch still looks fine, Turner's yellow definitely quite challenging to use uh, for mixing. Alright, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I hope this video is somewhat helpful. Thanks for watching. Oh, before you go, I just want to let you know that I am selling off some of my excess watercolor paint to make space to get more colors to test and also make more videos like this. So if you're interested to help me out, if you are interested to get some watercolor paint from me, check out the list of colors that I'm selling from the video description below. Alright, see ya!